My beloved brothers and sisters, as we come to the close of this historic conference, I join with you in thanking the Lord for his direction and inspiring influence. The music has been beautiful and uplifting. Not only have the messages been edifying, but they have been life-changing. In solemn assembly, we sustained a new First Presidency. Two great men have been placed in the Quorum of the Twelve Apostles. Eight new general authorities have been called. Now a favorite hymn summarizes our renewed resolve, our challenge, and our charge going forward. Let us all press on in the work of the Lord, that when life is o'er we may gain a reward. In the fight for right, let us wield a sword, the mighty sword of truth. Fear not, though the enemy deride courage, for the Lord is on our side. We will not heed what the wicked may say, but the Lord alone we will obey. I exhort you to study the messages of this conference frequently, even repeatedly, during the next six months. Conscientiously look for ways to incorporate these messages in your family home evenings, your gospel teaching, your conversations with family and friends, and even your discussions with those not of our faith. Many good people will respond to the truths taught in this conference when offered in love. And your desire to obey will be enhanced as you remember and reflect upon what you have felt these past two days. This general conference marks the beginning of a new era of ministering. The Lord has made important adjustments in the way we care for each other. Sisters and brothers, old and young, will serve one another in a new, holier way. Elders' quorums will be strengthened to bless the lives of men, women, and children throughout the world. Relief Society sisters will continue to minister in their unique and loving way, extending opportunities to younger sisters to join them as appropriately assigned. Our message to the world is simple and sincere. We invite all of God's children on both sides of the veil to come unto their Savior, receive the blessings of the Holy Temple, have enduring joy, and qualify for eternal life. Eventual exaltation requires our complete fidelity now to covenants we make and ordinances we receive in the house of the Lord. At this time, we have 159 functioning temples, and more are under construction. We want to bring temples closer to the expanding membership of the Church. So we are now pleased to announce plans to construct seven more temples. Those temples will be located in the following locations. Salta, Argentina. Bengaluru, India. Managua, Nicaragua. Cagayan de Oro, Philippines. Leighton, Utah. Richmond, Virginia. <laughs> and a major city yet to be determined in Russia. My dear brothers and sisters, construction of these temples may not change your life, but your time in the temple surely will. In that spirit, I bless you to identify those things you can set aside so you can spend more time in the temple. 
I bless you with greater harmony and love in your homes and a deeper desire to care for your eternal family relationships. I bless you with increased faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and a greater ability to follow him as his true disciples. I bless you to raise your voice in testimony, as I do now, that we are engaged in the work of Almighty God. Jesus is the Christ. This is his church, which he directs through his anointed servants. I so testify with my expression of love for each of you. In the sacred name of Jesus Christ, amen.